Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to do some cooking. I'm gonna run by my PO box. I'm gonna do some cleaning. So this is just a random old school YouTube video. So let's just jump in. So I'm gonna start off by making some breakfast oatmeal cookies. My daughter is limited in what she eats. She has autism and feeding issues are common among autistic children. And so I know that that girl loves a cookie. <laughs> so I try to make things as nutrient dense as I possibly can. And so this is a modified version of Sally's Baking Addiction. And I will link her recipe below and then my modifications are in the video. So pay attention because I'm gonna answer your questions before you ask them. So you start off with two cups oats. You can do quick, you can do rolled, you can do whatever. I just do the quick oats. Half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and then I did a cup of peanut butter because that's what I have. And then a quarter cup of maple syrup. I do a third cup of applesauce, and then one to two mashed bananas. And then I add in an egg and a scoop of protein powder. We're gonna stir it all up, put it on the pan, and bake at 350 degrees for, how long did we bake this? <laughs> About 15 to 20 minutes. I did add some mini chocolate chips to mine. My kids loved them. They were fantastic. Also, it got really, really cold where we lived this week, so I made waffles and I used my husband's waffle recipe. It is so easy. You're going to love it. Okay, so one and a half cups of flour, one and a half cups buttermilk. You can use any milk, regular milk, whole milk, 2%, oat, almond, whatever you have. We just had buttermilk. One tablespoon of baking powder. Now it's really funny because I actually forgot to add that to this recipe at first. And the first few waffles were just flat. And then I remembered and added it into the rest of them. Just a little bit of salt, like just a pinch. Um, he uses six tablespoons of sugar. I only used three this time. One egg and then three quarter cup of oil. He will actually whip the egg whites, but um, I'm not gonna do that. Then stir it together, and you can add blueberries, chocolate chips, um, any sort of fruit, nuts if you want. I did mini chocolate chips this time, and I just used all my little mini waffle irons and whipped them up, and they were delicious, and we had a ton left over to go in the freezer. I also ran by my P.O. box, and I wanted to show you some things. Thank you. I don't ever expect people to send me stuff, but occasionally a subscriber will reach out and ask, and this sweet subscriber, Christine, she owns a coffee company called Cape Lola and she sent me some pods of Filipino coffee and some grounds and it is absolutely amazing. I made some this morning. It is rich. It is strong. It is delicious. Um, so I will link to her below. Good luck, Christine, with your business. I am going to be reordering some soon because this was so good. So thank you. I also got some super sweet holiday cards that I didn't see before the holidays because I just don't check my PO that often. So thank you so much to the Bishop family. And this one almost made me cry because it's just so beautiful. Angela sent me this beautiful handmade card. People are so talented. As a person who has no talent, I just, I love it when I see people make beautiful things. So I had a post on Instagram go viral where I talked about my 15 minute chicken tacos. It got 3 million views and I really wasn't sure what was happening, but I thought I would make these chicken tacos for you because they are super easy to make and they're very inexpensive. I think when all is said and done, it costs me $9 to make 10, 10 tacos. So let's go. Okay, so I start off with two boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You're about to see raw chicken, okay? And I add in just a splash of lime juice. I don't even measure, just like splash it in there. And then I drizzle enough olive oil to coat all of the chicken. And then I add a pack of taco seasoning. So I usually buy my taco seasoning in bulk, but the store didn't have the kind I like this week. So I just got the little packets. And then you just coat, stir to coat it all. Sometimes I prep this in advance. So my husband takes chicken, quinoa, and broccoli for lunch every single day. And when he chops and preps his chicken on Sunday, we'll go ahead and chop this, season it, bag it, and put it in the refrigerator. And that way on Tuesday when it's time to make waffles, 
it's just done. It's ready to go. I throw it in the pan and I have dinner on the table in less than 20 minutes. So now I'm going to put them in the pan and cook them. I got this, this is a dupe, by the way, guys, this pan for the always pan. I got this for my husband for his birthday. It has held up really well. It was half the price and it, you get a bigger pan. So the key is to get the pan hot before you put the chicken in. Since I'm using a nonstick pan and I've already put a little olive oil on the chicken, you don't have to add any more, but you put it in and you do nothing. You leave it in the pan and you're going to leave it there for about three minutes. You're not going to stir it. You're not going to do anything. Fight the urge. I know it's hard. Fight the urge. Then after about three minutes, you're going to come through and flip the chicken over. So you have seared it on one side. You're going to sear it on the other and you're going to leave it. If you have a meat thermometer at the end, use it. Um, but I have never had my chicken undercooked. I think I cook it a total of seven minutes. While the chicken cooks, I shred my cheese. I like to use the Cabot cheese. It is naturally lactose free and it's great. So then I'm going to make 10 chicken tacos and four chicken quesadillas, or cheese quesadillas. Um, so I put the shredded cheese on the tortilla, then I add in some chicken, and that's all I do. I'm gonna stick it in the oven. I'm not gonna fold it in half yet. And then after it's cooked for about six, five, six minutes, I go open the oven door, use a spatula, fold it over, and let it cook for like three more minutes. The chickens are, the chickens, the tacos are delicious. They turn out great every single time. No regrets. Everybody loves them. Everybody's happy. The end. Also, while I have you here, if you are using a reusable pod for your Keurig or other pod coffee maker, go right now and sanitize it. Get some hot water, put some Dawn dish soap in it, and let it sit in there for about an hour. Just do it, okay? realized tonight we're having chicken wraps for dinner it's a cheat recipe cheat as in you don't cook all of it it's like compiled but does anyone remember the mcdonald's crispy snack wrap that they discontinued well here's how i make it at home i get these home style boneless chicken bites i get them at sam's you can find this style of chicken nuggies anywhere I put them in the air fryer for 11 minutes at 390, and then I make my own little ranch, add some shredded lettuce, put your chicken, a little cheese on top, you've got dinner in just a few minutes and everybody loves it. Sometimes when I think about the amount of meals I'm going to have to make between now and when all of my kids leave home, I start to spiral, which is stupid because A, I chose to have children, and B, I understood I had to feed them when I had them. But it does often feel like but I just cooked, but I have to cook again, but I just cooked and eating out destroys our budget so fast. No judgment. If you are a person who eats out on a regular basis, I just, it's not something I can do. We went to, um, a, like a nicer sit down restaurant over the weekend and it was $109 and I cannot do that multiple times a month. So I thought I would share with you some ways that I have made meal planning and cooking less frustrating because it is tedious and monotonous sometimes and I think well I have other things to do but feeding my family is kind of important so number one and I say this all the time but the most expensive food that you buy is the food that you throw away so cook foods that you actually want to eat and by that I mean think about what you get at a restaurant that you really enjoy and see if you can make that at home and I know that it sounds like ugh, Lydia, I could just go out to eat. But think about it this way. By the time you load up your family and drive there, you probably could have had it made already. And I don't find sitting in a restaurant with small children to be a particularly enjoyable experience. Learning to eat in a restaurant is a skill, um, but it's not one that I have the energy to teach today. So 
finding those recipes that my family absolutely loves and emulating them at home. Cashew chicken, orange chicken, banh mi bowls, those wraps that I made just a minute ago that I showed you about. Um, just finding those things and seeing how I can make them. Number two, have nights where we have the same thing. So we do have our chicken tacos on Tuesday and we will mix it up so it's not the same thing every week. But what I mean by that is also on Wednesday we have hot sandwiches. Every Wednesday it's going to be some sort of hot sandwich and it can be a meatball sub. It can be a buffalo chicken sandwich, but it can also be like um, Haverty and provolone. No, those are two cheeses. <laughs> it can be like Haverty and pastrami on a piece of rye bread and we toast it just a hot sandwich and I know that every single person in my house is going to eat some variation of that. My next tip is to not not aim for 100% of your family is going to eat it. Like there are things that you enjoy that one kid likes that another kid doesn't and that has been my issue with cooking is that someone's going to complain, someone's going to have something to say and it is so defeating when you cook and a kid's like Ugh. and I'm just not one of those well I make it you eat it and that's the end of it parents. I'm that's just not me. So I aim for, if half my kids like it, it's a win. We'll figure something out for the rest of them. And that's why you saw me make cheese quesadillas when making the chicken quesadillas because two of my kids are not meat eaters and I just, I'm doing my best out here. Um, simplify your recipes. If it has over five ingredients, it's, it's, no, it's a no for me. Um, if it's going to take over 30 minutes, it's a no for me. So simplifying things and making them easier. Explore convenience options, okay? Yes, I sometimes villainize convenience foods because I know it would be much cheaper if I just chopped everything myself, but my time is worth something and so is yours. And sometimes the buying the pre-chopped vegetables is the difference between us eating a meal cooked at home and us not eating a meal cooked at home. Also, pre-cooked meals. I try to do one in my cart every time it, I go to the store, and so we only eat it like once or twice a month, but it's there. It's that fallback that's the difference between me spending $56 at Chick-fil-A or me spending $9 on this pre-cooked meal. Leave me your recommendations, how, how you handle all the cooking. If you're the primary chef in your family, leave them, let's help each other out. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year. I think I've said that 17 times. Um, have a great day. I'm really proud of you and we'll talk soon.